Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my ever-loving, sweet baby Jesus. It's another hot fix. I couldn't have you ever met the baby Jesus? That sentence. Uh, only have you ever met him, bloke? I remember once when I was a kid, there was like a, a church near me, and it had a golden baby Jesus, and it said it was made of gold. It wasn't very big. one. <laughs> He's small. Right, it was um, Mary was holding the little baby, and it was made of gold. And I it said it's actual gold, and I was like, "What?" Don't think I've ever seen a real baby it, golden Jesus. It's a Catholic church, <laughs> so someone's nicked that at this point, right? They've stolen it. No, it's like right, a just... massive church. I don't know, bro. It was like seventy foot in the air. Or <laughs> I thought something. you were going to say it was a massive Jesus, a massive the... gold baby Jesus. Look. It's like that big <laughs> at the other end. <laughs> oh. No, but yes, as you were saying, baby Jesus, yes. <laughs> yes, Hotfix is back again. It was, I'll tell you what's bad for schedules. I, uh, I'll, I'll t- if For those who are who don't know what's bad for schedules, babies, pretty bad for schedules. They don't care what you want to do. They don't care what you've got planned or where you need to be or what you have, what what you are required to do because they don't understand such, such concepts. They understand I'm hungry and I'm sleepy and that's it. There's literally nothing else. So if baby decides to, for instance, just as a minor example, go to the toilet and then never <laughs> stop for the next five hours, baby will do that. And you've just got to deal with it. Well, you've got to mostly pray and cry in the corner. To the golden just, baby Jesus. That, the golden that's baby what you Jesus. need because that one wouldn't like cry. <laughs> and so you could sell it as well for massive, melt it down. I wouldn't advise yeah, doing nanny. that though with an actual baby. That'd just be get bad. a nanny and just deal. Just you deal with it. Just go over there. Take it over there. I don't want to. Yeah, it's it, it's sporadic at the moment. Hot fix, but hopefully, as she starts to get a bit older and does what she's told and actually has a bedtime, then it'll get better. But don't don't hate me. Hate my kid instead. It's her fault. So no, don't do that either. Hot fix is our laser focused. <laughs> it's been so long. He's forgotten how to do it. What is that? I, no, Ooh. I can't go backwards because I'm, I've got cables wrapped around my chair, so I'm stuck in this oh. position. <laughs> so I can't go back. St- I can lean back. <laughs> I'm pretty sure on the last hot fix, which was literally like four weeks ago, you talked about having a new chair and how you don't use the other chair. How is it that in a month oh. the other chair is still behind you? This is no longer a chair. This is a footrest. It might be an expensive footrest, but it is it's a footrest. It's like 150 quid or something, ain't it, that? It, it's usually out of view It's a over really there. expensive footrest. Hey, I also... I, <laughs> hey, I, well, I can't be able to show you, but I also bought a turntable, and I put a picture of this on Twitter. Um, oh, went to a charity shop. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to a charity shop, and I'm like, um, have you got any records? And they went, yeah. And I'm like, and they're like, EPs and I'm just like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what any of it means. I, I think it means extended players. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, and they went, we've got this, and I'm like, right. It's German, Deutsch Grammophon, Gestefan Schlaf, Beethoven, blah blah blah, Berliner. Be worth something, Phil- you know. It must be the Berlin F- Philharmonic Philharmonic yeah. Orchestra. Anyway, Grand Prix something <laughs> Paris. I don't know. Well, I thought it looked fancy. It was only a pound. It looked fancy. I was like... Someone's going to contact it. you now and be like, I'll give you 100 quid for it. <laughs> yeah, it's worth 20 grand. <laughs> I'm like, look at it. Look at it. i got a record. Now I feel like a hipster. Um, you, already, you had the Lucio record though, didn't you? Which is... Yeah, yeah. But I played it on the wrong speed. <laughs> yeah, so here you go. It's that bad. I didn't know about record players and speeds and stuff. I had to Google it. I was like... I mean, in fairness, so... it was a little bit before our time. <laughs> Well, yeah, I know that, true. I say that. I mean, they've been popular <laughs> since, but it's like I, I, I've never sat there and gone. Well, no, that's a lie. I have occasionally because my parents have got a massive load of records. <laughs> They've got like original pressings of Deep Purple and stuff. And I'm like, I want those, not because I particularly care to listen to them, but I want them because that's pretty awesome. But you a hipster bloke? Is that what I've you're never, trying to tell me? Never mm. sat there really and gone. I could listen to this on Spotify, or I could buy a record player. I don't think I've ever, I've never, that's never occurred to me. Like, as soon as music became more readily available on CDs and MP3 CDs, which were, what a creation those were, just the idea of having any sort of, like, record player-esque device, it left my brain, and it never really came back. 
So I the whole because I, I, I watched weird. that video and I was like, it sounds good to me. And then, and then it was oh okay, it's at the wrong speed. Fine, fair enough. Whatever. Yeah. Well, I seen the comments coming in and it was like, uh, haha, it's on thirty three, and I'm like, what? So <laughs> I, I rang my parents up because they're old, and I said hello. Um, I took a, I took a picture of it. Right? <laughs> I sent them a picture of it, and I was like, what speed does this go on? And they're like, oh, that's a single. It goes on forty five. I'm like. I, I was so what's the, hang on, what's the difference then? So is 33 for longer records? Like, do you fit more on yeah. on a 33? The Beethoven is 33, the big one. If it's right. bigger, it goes slower. If it's smaller, it goes faster. Okay. <laughs> it's, I'm assuming there must be a good it's, reason for it, but it's if you're oh, not familiar with the technology, the size of it. it's like you're <laughs> not going to... technology. <laughs> this, the, <laughs> people the say technology that. technology from before it, I was born. It's better. <laughs> It sounds better than like, you know, like a, a crystal clear like flak file or whatever, whatever they call, you know, a super MP3 or isn't a WAP. It, and it's I'm something like, to do with like, uh, isn't it like warmth? They're supposed to have more like, like uh, depth and warmth to it. I think people they feel say, less artificial. That's the thing. It, like, yeah. You know, when you got like a crystal clear sound from Spotify. Yeah. Of, yeah. Like a song. It's like, yeah. It's it's the sound, but it's not like. It's actually, I think I could. Real. I think I, I could get behind that because I, it's the same kind of argument with guitar amps, where like solid state amps are not as good as tube amps. Tube amps yeah. are way more expensive. They're older tech. I mean, the fact I remember you telling me yeah. tubes and valves and whatever, and they're more unreliable. They just they just are oh, because occasionally you'll just have a, a thing just blow like it just stop working and you only got to replace part of the part of the amp but it, every guitarist ever i think in the history of of gu- electric guitars has said tube amps sound better they just sound better they are just better they provide like imperfections that you and don't get from a real. solid state yeah, and that makes yeah. it nicer to listen to and more like it gives you a better feel so yeah i know i guess i could i could get I could get feel is that. a very strong thing like i mean this beethoven thing uh, bloke, i don't know how old this is this is like ancient there is no way a CD of this age would still function, really. It'd be wrecked. Oh, God, no. Like, the, it feels weird to me that like it's physically in my hand. I mean, obviously, yeah, it's only... Oh, and I didn't even know you could flip the things over and they had tracks on either side. That, that blew my mind. But yeah, I think I might start buying them because I can plug them into that soundbar I've got because it's got an aux out, the turntable. It's oh, only a really yeah. cheap turntable because it's got really shit inbuilt speakers. But obviously, you don't, you don't have speakers in a turntable. You plug them into a good speaker thing, don't you? Yeah. I don't know anything about it, but it's just it, it's kind of nice to have it. You know, like it's it's nice. But this is the thing like, where he starts going down the rabbit hole where it's yeah. where it's like I got this cheap turntable and then yeah. eventually you'll come across something and be like, Oh, it turns out that actually this turntable can slightly damage the records if you upgrade to this one. Yeah. But then you upgrade to one and then you find out that actually the one just above it, which is only a couple of quid extra, and then before you know it, you've got a two hundred quid turntable and a five hundred quid sound system and you're buying gold plated audio cables because the sound travels better or and something the, yeah <laughs> you're traveling you the got... globe to find a first press of fucking Ludwig Ludwig Van Beethoven <laughs> so whatever it's like yeah I yeah, I, I can see how people get into it though it's it's, it's, uh... it's exactly I mean I suppose it's the same as like mountain biking or road biking or I'm looking for a new guitar amp at the moment and it's just the rabbit hole is just real it's just extreme it's like okay I just want something small and relatively cheap Oh, look, See, there's a massive second-hand, third-hand market, all of this. It's like, oh, my God. You explain to me, right, bloke, this is a, a record, right? This is the Lucio thing. And I'm like, right, it, it's just got Lucio's album little, name on it, right? frog head on it, yeah. Yeah, and then it's got, like, the name of the tracks on the back, and then it's just got, like, a little bit of logo information. Yeah. What, where's the speed? Like, there's no speed thing? So I put Does it, it not on. Say on, not on the, not on the back, not like around where the logos are? doesn't say yeah, anything on the record it's itself, nothing. does it? It's just got a little smiley, no, is it a smiley but face it's the or size. is it his headset? It's his I headphones. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, the size stick. I, I don't know, but like, anyway, yeah, record players. That is, I have to say, that might be one of the more uh, kind of excessive things to put in a, It was was it the recruiter's kit or the collector's edition or whatever it's called? Yeah, they, they, they sent um, these, um, I've got three of them for some reason. I don't know why they kept sending them to me, but they... <laughs> They told me they were pretty rare, but I don't think they are. Those people have got them. Um, yeah. Also, some of the stuff inside them you do get, like when you buy box versions of the game. I think. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they're weird, weird. But it's like it just seems like when I when you put it on Twitch, I was like, that's a that seems like a, a strange thing to put in, just because I don't see 
maybe I'm just completely out of touch with it, but I was like, surely not that many people will have the means to play it. But then maybe it turns out that yeah. most people and, and do. And then there's me. Point. Well, there's me thinking, oh, I'll get a record player and I'll make a video and we'll see what's on it. But then they actually just uploaded the tracks to the SoundCloud anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. At least you get to hear the actual full tracks in some at description. The wrong speed. But, yeah. Well, you know. It but it sounds all right, way. actually, even at the it's slowest just... speed. Yeah. I did like the advice that someone gave, which is if you turn the video speed up uh, in the player to one point, yeah, yeah, yeah. it would play it at the correct <laughs> speed. I like that. Handy, helpful it's advice. Gone too deep. <laughs> Who would have thought it? Helpful advice in the YouTube comments section. It happens once a century. Or oh, it's the mark of the end times. We don't know which. Yeah, we'll find out. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are behind it or something. <laughs> it yeah. is one of the four horsemen. Helpful. Yeah, it is. <laughs> helpful YouTube horsemen. comments. <laughs> Right, let's get into... i tell you what, no, before we go into the news, there is something that I just want to quickly talk about, very briefly, which was addressed on your Twitter account not that long ago. Um, there's, there's confusion reigns. A while ago, I put a video on the channel talking about how I was going to... I have had my own channel. I was going to move most of my content over there due to just the fact that there's so much content going on everywhere that we can't spam Unit Lost with a ton of content. It doesn't work like that. It's not very good. It holds the channel back. So all of my stuff has moved to my channel. So all of the Unit Lost stuff is, is Stye's stuff. That's his stuff. Unit Lost yeah, is people now- will say to me, where's Steam Gift Gamble and shit like that? And I'm like, Kiri said, and he even made a video, and that's on this <laughs> channel, which said it's on his channel. So go yeah. over there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all of my content, all of my stuff. Like, Unit Lost is now Stylosis, just Stylosis channel with Overwatch on it and Hotfix. And everything else, all the other stuff, like the Let's Play stuff that I did and well, the Steam Gift Gamble and all the other fair, stuff. I think we'll put Hotfix on your channel going forward, you know. Because I like Yeah, Hotfix, shift it over. But I don't I don't want to get like... Um, uh, I don't want to get lost. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so even Hotfix, and I like probably after this one, will be... on other people's channels as well. This Maybe is true. Because like, at the moment, I'm, I'm like, I'm hosting and producing Hotfix but it's going on the Unit Lost channel, but all my other content... Wait, mate, this one might be on your channel, though. Yeah, it might this be. This be a good conversation um, to this. <laughs> be, it's just going to be really confusing for everyone. But, yeah, it's like... Oh, yeah, and actually, the, the Patreon for this as well. We'll do something with that as well. Like, we'll probably have you make a new one for it, so you can yeah. control it. Because it's like the old Unit Lost thing, because I'm going to change the other Unit Lost Patreon Yeah, as well. everything is just... Some people were saying to me about that, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. I, I've got... Like, you got to understand... And it's like there's a lot of stuff for me to do, and yeah, everything. Everything get around to it. Everything's in, it might actually if we whatever. I was going to say something, but if this goes up on yours, and then going forward, all the rest of them go on mine. Whatever, however it works out. At the at the moment, everything is like still half integrated because like we had the weird situation where I disappeared for like two months, and then you started making Overwatch content, and then the stuff that happened with me and my daughter in hospital and all that stuff that stopped me from making any stuff. And then there was already loads of stuff on the channel, which you know they didn't need to be any more content on the channel because it would have just diluted it and made it really confusing for all the people coming in. It just means that everything's still slightly meshed together, but it doesn't need to be because there's Unit Lost, which is Stye's channel, and there's my channel, which is Curious TV, which you can find at youtubecom TV. It's and also in the van, uh, in the it. side of my channel as well. It says yeah. uh, like pure channels. Yeah, and for God's sake, if I get one more email asking <laughs> why. Oh, why don't you talk to each other anymore? But look, look, look at the video you're watching. Take it from me and him from the fact we're talking to each other, making a goddamn video. It, there's no dra- There's no drama to be had. There's nothing. Stop fishing for God's sake. This isn't Reddit. What the fuck is your problem? It, it just it just went different ways. That's all it is. Oh my god. I tell you what, I've had so much stuff about that. It's just been unreal. It's like, oh, it's a shame you don't talk anymore. There's a video on my channel. That we made. Well, I say we. That we played you're, Overwatch you're together. You made a video like I put on my channel the other day. Yeah, here we are running around. <laughs> yeah, it's like we're... no, stop it. Unit lost. Stars channel. Kiriot TV. My channel. Unit lost. Stars content. My channel. My content. That's it. Easy. Easy peasy. Subscribe to both. Watch both. That's what you should do because they're they're both quality. So just do that. But just. To stop with the flood. The flood it needs to be gone. It needs to st- it needs to stop. The questions are killing me. That's it. <laughs> Done. Vine. 
it's been getting overwhelming, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'm not going to lie about it. It has been getting mildly overwhelming. But now it's sorted. It's fine. You all know the deal. You all know what's happening. It's all fine. It's all good. All, all really nice. Great. Fantastic. Let's move on. We were talking about playing Overwatch literally a second ago. And Overwatch is the fastest I don't play the game. selling. <laughs> <laughs> the fastest selling Blizzard game on console in the UK, which I've just found to be quite interesting, and it can just lead into a nice conversation about Overwatch as a whole. I didn't think it would do that well on console, I'm not going to lie, but Chart Track, which tracks physical sales only, says that uh, 47% of launch week sales were on PlayStation 4, and 36% on Xbox One, and 18% on PC in the UK. Now, I know that the UK is quite a big console uh, country. But, ah, yes, but these are physical only that's, sales. Yeah, uh, that's uh, true. PC would have more um, digital downloads uh, sales, but yeah, I, you, you are right in what you're saying. The UK is generally console It's got a lot of PC gaming, don't get me wrong, but yeah. it's not like Germany, for example, which is heavily PC gaming, and a lot of the European countries tend to be. Um, America, very, very big console, but also PC as well. It's, it's hard to just generalize like that, but yeah. The thing is, it just says it's Blizzard game. Now, I think Diablo 3 did quite well. Diablo 3 I mean, broke all kinds of records, didn't it? I can't remember. It, it was... Was it the fastest selling game? Or like the most <clears throat> unit shift? No, I'm, I'm just talking on console. Diablo oh, on 3 console. was the, one of the fastest selling PC games, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I that it kind of surprised me. Just because I didn't feel like... I know you've got like the uh, the... the the animations and stuff going up on like the PlayStation channel and uh, stuff like that. Um, that's the that's the source that I saw pretty much every animation they've done so far, kind of being publicised. Like the link being spread around was one from the I'm sure it was the Sony PlayStation channel. Um, yes, I think the Winston one was on their channel. Yeah, and then but, the a live one was on the Xbox channel or something. No, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you are right though. They, they split them. Yeah, it's been a deal. Like but then but... with the with the beta being like. The closed beta being PC, and wasn't that your open beta PC only, or have I just invented that? No, um, they had console versions of the open. Oh, they did. I'm okay, sure that makes did, more yeah. sense. I'm sure they did. I know. I've not. I've not even played the game on console. No. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, I'm not I've saying it's seen... bad on console. Like when I had this discussion with some people over Twitter, um, because Tracer and Symmetra and Reaper, anyone who is close range or moves really quick like Genji it's very difficult to play them on console if you think of uh, if you've played them on PC or you're used to playing PC because the movement is completely different and it's a bit weird when I've seen it played but like when you're playing it on console you're just playing it on console so you you, you don't have like it's almost like a pointless argument me saying oh yeah it's it must be really difficult to control because I control it on PC whereas yeah. it would be difficult for a console gamer to play with keyboard and mouse but yeah, this is kind of interesting because you wouldn't have expected it to beat Uncharted 4 or no. knock that off the top and Doom th uh, Doom 3 because Doom's third on the list. <laughs> Doom. I mean, Homefront, that's a fucking disaster show, that game. I've heard nothing but bad things about Homefront. <laughs> like, literally nothing but bad things. It's it's really good, though. I mean, I always... I know that you did have Diablo on console, but as far as I'm aware, Diablo 3 wasn't supported all that well on console. I don't believe they had quite as much of the... Um, it was later. Support. It was definitely much later. I think it was yeah. like Reaper of Souls when that came out or something. Because yeah. I got Reaper of Souls on the PS4. and it, Yeah, because I remember I had the different control system where you could roll out of the way yeah. of things, which made it quite which good. I, I really like that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, overall, I think there's been a really weird... Not really weird. It's not really weird. It's the internet. It's not that weird. Overwatch had a load of hype before it came out. It, it was... And then, when, obviously, when it released, it has exploded, and people are absolutely loving the game. Um, we're seeing now what can only be described as like the, I guess, like the anti-hype start to roll in, where you've got people who have decided they don't like the game so much, or they don't think it's that great. Overall, reviews have been positive. I don't think I've really seen a negative review from a mainstream outlet, um, despite some people thinking that like eight out of ten is negative because it's not. That's obviously still a good. It's a good score. Um, but we're st there's all kinds of... If you go to Metacritic, it's the best kind of example of this, um, which I had up earlier, and then I managed to lose it again, um, where it's been doing well, except now we're starting to see like a backlash against it, whereby 
the <coughs> meta score for the critics is 92. The user score is 7.3. And that's because there's like an influx of the reviews that are in the kind of like the one or two or three range. Um, and there's some, that are, I mean, there's examples right here. This is a this is a, a zero, a zero <laughs> review. I love user reviews are even ten or zero. It's like <laughs> zero out of ten. Um, could be okay for a few hours if it was free to play, but this crap doesn't. It costs forty bucks. Mm. It's also a blatant rip off of TF two. <laughs> One out of ten. Nothing new. No gameplay innovations in this overplayed genre. Overplayed genre. Really? Probably just means um, FPS. Well, yeah, I suppose. No campaign, so no interesting story or lore. Well, actually, that's not true, because there is story and lore. You just don't get it in the game. No real motivation to play. That's, again, a <laughs> completely personal thing. Well, I'm going this... to stop you here, because I've made a video out uh, addressing this, and I don't know when this is going to go out and whether that's gone out before or what, but just to recap, um, it the people who, who who feel like they've not they've not got enough game with Overwatch are people who do want a single player campaign who want to play the game with their friends and they want like co-op modes and they want loads of different maps and I mean loads of maps loads yeah. of different ways to play the game because if you think of it all Overwatch gives you is um 12 maps 21 heroes four game modes that's it and a match lasts about 9 minutes you go into a game that's great. You might play a couple of times and you think, all right, that's fine. You need like a certain mentality. You need to be the person who like um, plays League of Legends or the person who played Dota where you can play the same map over and over again. But because all the heroes are so different, then yeah. the enjoyment you get from the game is making that play or learning that hero or, you know, that top lane gank. It's exactly the same with Overwatch. I mean, to give you an example of a gank, um, I, I have been... Put, forcing myself to play pickup groups uh, almost exclusively with Overwatch and I'm like level 33 or something right now at the point I'm at now I'm playing with people who are like level 70 and 80 they must be insane right the time commitment they've put in to get to that level <laughs> yeah. at this point right but even now you see amazing things happen uh, I've been playing a lot of Zarya her ultimate um, Graviton Surge it sucks people in right it doesn't do a lot of damage to them but it pulls everyone into like a black hole genji will instantly fire his ultimate straight through it and kill everybody and it's like that is that is you don't get to that without playing the game a lot i'm not yeah. you don't have to be good at the game this is this is where it's kind of difficult because i'm not sitting here going like oh it's not for casuals you have to be this elite gamer it's not but when you play the game more you learn more things like um genji against mccree if you're mccree you don't throw your flashbang at Genji. You throw it into the ground. Because Genji can't deflect it when it explodes in the ground. And it flashes yeah. him. And then you just kill him. But if you throw it at him, he'll probably deflect it back at you. Uh, and then you're going to like have to try and kill him without the crowd control. So there's all these like very complex things. And it's very similar to like your, your LOL and your Dota. But the big major difference is they're free to play games. This is not. So if you buy this game, you're like, I think people expect more like they expect single I mean I I went to Blizzard at the end of last year and I said to them why don't you have like little single player story things in the game like it, it doesn't have to be long you know imagine like half an hour where you run around and it teaches you Tracer story or it's the event where Tracer's um, slipstream jet fucking blows up or whatever and she gets lost in time and you know and all that shit yeah little things like that is, it, I think would have helped the game a lot because Overwatch is um, a heavily character-driven game. You look at the characters, they're amazing, the design of the characters are, because not even like... <coughs> I don't like the way all of them look, but the way they've been built and designed, you, you recognise, don't you, who they are. Like, if I showed you yeah. a Bastion, you'd be like, that's Bastion, fuck that guy. You know, you, you'd know straight away who they are, and you know what they do from just looking at them. Yeah. Reaper's yeah. got two shotguns. Well, he's close range, yeah? Tracer looks extremely fast and she's got and small, lightweight, she's gonna move quick. Farah's got jump jets attached to her back, she's gonna fly. Winston's a chimp, so he's gonna jump in it. So you you know, like and on that level I think it's a bit ridiculous. But yeah, these reviews, um, I understand why people would do it, because if you compare it to other full priced games, 
it is light on content in that respect. But you know what's really fucking dirty? This is fucking dirty. This is extreme. And I think I've I've still got my notes open because I I, 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 like, I made this video before <laughs> we start recording this. It's uh fifty nine ninety nine dollars for the Origins edition, uh, or forty four ninety nine pound for the Origins edition. When you go to buy Overwatch, it defaults to the Origins edition, and it doesn't show you the normal edition of the game. Yeah. It's a small link. They have to scroll down and click on. It's fucking dirty. Because the game's only twenty nine ninety nine or thirty nine yep. ninety nine dollars, that's way better. If that was the price for Overwatch, I don't think people would care. But because no, they're trying to give you Origins, like, hey, buy this, it's worth. Well, they make more money off it, right? Yeah, that is the the content argument, though. I think is something that could just go back and forth forever. Because for yeah, me, but bloke, you can play this game for hundreds, thousands of hours. It's like lot well, yeah, one map. That's the this thing. has got 12, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, the, there is the free-to-play argument where it's like, yeah, LoL is free-to-play, Dota is free-to-play, Team Fortress 2 is free-to-play. They are free-to-play, and that's that's fine. But just because another game is free-to-play, that doesn't make like a rival game worth less of your time or less of your money. Like The, the content with Overwatch... It's not really like the content is only partially made up of the twelve maps and the twenty one heroes and the game and the, like the, the different game modes. That's like that is the basis of the content. The actual content comes from playing the game. And this is the other thing as well. There never used to be this thing of oh well, uh, there's no story. I mean, how? Let's look at Unreal Tournament for instance. Back in the day, way back in the <laughs> yeah. day, Unreal Tournament. Who was sitting there going, oh well? I mean, I don't like multiplayer. So uh, I just want I just want the story for Unreal Tournament. That's what the game was. Why That's all it was. Is it, where's this attitude come from? Where for something to where, be worth money, it has to have a campaign. Because that seems yeah, where uh, or, or, that's or a like, lot of where yeah, the complaints come from. Who plays the Battlefield campaign? Nobody. It's shit. Yeah, no um, one cares. Wh- I, I, I I don't understand where, where people have got this disconnect from now. Where if you play something, if you enjoy it. Then it must be it's worth your money, right? You, you've enjoyed it; it's worth your money. But it's like, no, we need more. Uh, it's not worth yeah. it. I need more than that. You see it with indie games as well, where it'll be like, oh, I'd buy this game if it was three pound, but it's five pound, so no. It's like, what? You, are you yeah. joking me? You know what I mean? It, it, I saw that exact. Is a bit mental. I saw that exact attitude with uh, Transistor, funnily enough, which I, I bang on enough about. But people said it was overpriced because it wasn't long enough to warrant paying what they're asking for it. The length of it makes no difference. The experience of Transistor was fantastic, and it was an important game. What they did was, in, like, it it had impact. It was something yeah. that hadn't really been done in that kind of way before. And it also ignores, like, completely... People seem to completely ignore things like, yeah, Battlefield has got a campaign. No one plays it because it's shit and no one cares, and it's it lazily really done, and it's really bad. Yeah. I would much prefer that a game doesn't have a campaign... And the company who made the game, for instance, spends all their time and effort creating a diverse cast of interesting characters because, with different yeah. abilities, which is what You're Overwatch totally right. has got. This is all Overwatch is, right? It looks light on content, but it's took... I know it's it's been rescued from assets from uh, Titan, their, their MMO. Uh, but what they've done is they've just decided to say, we are going to make the most enjoyable for every kind of player arena shooter. And that's what they've done. Yeah. And, and they've that's what it is. It, I, I challenge you to go out there and play a game, an FPS game, and get more enjoyment out of it than you would out of playing Overwatch with a diverse range of player abilities. Because if you play Counter Strike, right, if you don't have the fucking flick shots, like, I mean, I made a video on Overwatch where I was explaining to people how to flick shot. I can do it most of the time. And people were like, Jesus Christ, this is impossible. How is this guy doing this? And I'm thinking, yeah, if I was playing with these guys in CS:GO, they'd probably die. You know, that it would instantly die. Yeah. And it'd be frustrating for them because they get orb shot or whatever, and it's like, okay, you're dead. Overwatch is not like that, and it. I mean, the thing is, I'm the wrong person to talk to about this because ugh, I don't know how many hours I've played the game for. I don't know how many <laughs> videos I've made on the game, but it is really enjoyable. And what I like about it is, it's a game that I didn't really realize that I needed, and then when it was given to me, it, I mean, do you remember back way, 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 way back when, like? October I think last year I played it and I said to you this game is fucking amazing like and I yeah. played it for like an hour I was like what I said this is just crazy because even at that point it was dead polished a and lot of balance is, changes am... have come in since then but yeah. it's, it was dead polished it was like whoa the sound design in that game is like 
really good in Overwatch. And I was like, really when, good. when you told, when you said it was amazing, it was really good. I was like, okay, but it's an FPS. I'm crap at FPS. I mean, we've talked before about. We used to play uh, Counter Strike loads. We used to play it constantly, um, yeah. just on Office all the time. I was never any good at it. There was a reason I never used the Mac 10, and that's because it was funny to use it, and it was therefore funny when my terrible aiming killed someone because I couldn't kill anyone with any other gun anyway to save a life. So <laughs> for me to go into something like Overwatch, where you have... <laughs> it's a first-person shooter, where half the time I don't play a first-person shooter. Like, I, I'm, I'll play Mercy, or I'll play Reinhardt, or I'll play Roadhog. I mean, Roadhog... It doesn't even matter if you miss most of your shots because if you land your hook and then do a left click and murder someone, that's like two buttons. If you can do that maybe, I don't know, five, six times in the game at the key point, congratulations, you've been a good road hog because you've just been blocking damage and you've what, been What it rewards you for doing I don't is have being... to be good. It's great. It's yeah, fantastic. Yes, but you, yeah, but you still are good in, in a way. Like This is the thing. It rewards you for being aware of what's going on. If you're yeah. playing road hog and you're, say, at the first point on... Temple of Anubis, you know, where they come under the arch. If you're yeah, Roadhog yeah. and you're down there and you're bossing the issue, you don't have to be good at, like, aiming to kill people. But because you're there, you you know you should be there. You're good tactically. Maybe not reactionary, but tactically you are. Yeah. Other players can play reactionary play. Like, there could be somebody behind you playing Widowmaker, sniping them as they do whatever. But you are b- bossing them away. It's almost like you, you are a tank. It's like with the support classes. They're different in their own right as well. It's very... Yeah. It's, it's very... Um, I, I, like I keep saying, it's a very dynamic and fluid game. That's why I like it. Because when I first started YouTube, it was because of StarCraft 2. And... I, I remember I searched for a bloody like a how-to guide and found a video and it's like holy hell what the hell is this that thing of getting better at the game what Overwatch does it caters to me and it caters to somebody like you as well and we can yeah. still play together there is no like like I can go away and try and become the best player I want to become but you can still have fun and I can still just play with you there is no like it's yeah. not like oh you fucked me over mate because you're shit or like I'm fucking you over because I'm suddenly you know if you play with me you you're with players with a higher rating or, or whatever it doesn't matter because you can still be that roadhog and you can still boss that point yeah ah! it's more this about is... knowledge this game is than the, than a lot of things like yeah you can get good uh, kills and, and shit off like, there's a guy called Seagull who's, who's like a pro gamer and he's very good with like Genji he killed like the whole team and they got loads of kills and it was very impressive but if somebody was a Winston, he would not have killed them. <laughs> like they would have yeah. just killed him because Winston just kills Genji. It's like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So this is the. I think this is the the big thing with the kind of the launch of the game where we've had this. There's this been surge of positivity where it's you know the mainstream media outlets absolutely love it. I, I've yet I think to see they, a they love bad it view. because they the people who look at the game and review it are like graphically looks great, not not high end, but it looks great. Yeah, uh, it's like World of Warcraft was, and that came out. I remember it looked the graphics were shit, but it's like even now you can yeah. go back and, and be mesmerized by the detail of it. Not like the the technical prowess of it, but the detail of it. You've got amazing sound design. You've got extremely good FPS mechanics that are reactionary. If we don't yeah. talk about netcode, and, and loads of stuff, and it's just dead polished. That's what they would look at and be like, "Wow, this is a this is." <laughs> it almost sets the bar, right? When you look at that game. And then you look at other games that come out. They can look yeah. shit in terms of polish. We know Blizzard ultra polished stuff, but this is like to the extreme. There's it's also like, this. That's why they would like it. That's yeah, just... and there's a, but there's also this kind of this kind of I guess community backlash as well. I, a big problem with things like well things like Metacritic is that the score yeah. can be swayed by people who don't dislike the game because they've played the game and don't enjoy it, but because they've decided to take a moral stand it's like this is the hill i choose to die on and it's the fact that overwatch has got or microtransactions it's, it's blizzard one out of ten you. or it's blizzard yeah, or, yeah. or yeah. like as one person uh just made a massive rant about it's it's kind of killed battleborn like battleborn was 40 percent off on steam the other day how long has that been game is that how long has that game been out not long like not even a, is it a month maybe it came out at the same time as the open beta started for overwatch I don't, I don't know whether that was calculated or not on Blizzard's part. I'd imagine probably not. They wouldn't it, care that No, much. they don't um, care. They they just are like, this is our game and it's coming out on this date. They don't, like, yeah. Battleborn's not even the same game as Overwatch, though. No, it no. visually <laughs> sort of looks similar, but it's not the same game. And I've got to be honest, it's a bit mediocre, Battleborn. That's why it's done the, shit. It's not because of Overwatch has come out and wrecked it. I just felt like I was playing a slightly different Borderlands, to be honest. Yeah, from Battleborn. I don't know that's why they just I, make a new Borderlands. That's all I got from it. It was just like, oh, it's, it's like, 
it's Borderlands, but not okay. <laughs> but that was, but that was it. But it's like this is the problem where I think, and I, I think is people do let stuff like Metacritic, for instance, you know, sway their decision. They might go to me and go, "Oh, critics liked it," but look at this. All these people said that this is like only got a seven point three. Like, yeah, but not really for good reasons. If you don't like the gameplay, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. If you don't like, if you really don't like the fact it's behind a paywall and you sincerely believe that it is just like TF2 and therefore should be free to play. I don't agree with you, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to shout you down for it. If no. your argument is it's Blizzard, one out of ten. If your argument is <laughs> Battleborn's better, one out of ten. You know, if if your argument is this is popular and I don't like popular stuff, one out of ten, then it's not, it's not conducive to an actual honest reflection of the game. Like it doesn't create uh, something that you can look at and trust. Instead, it's just like, okay, well, how many of these are just people being a, a bit off, like, like uh, it, the comments on the the, the microtransactions. Uh, it, it is cheeky that there are paid microtransactions in the game. It's all for cosmetic stuff. There's no advantage to any of it. But um, I get, I guess, on their part, it's like, well, why not? <laughs> like, well, okay, we are selling so, the I... game. If you want to buy boxes, you can buy them as well. But it's like the boxes are the reward for leveling up, and yeah. as you level up, it gets slower and slower each time. Um, so you'll get less boxes. So I think there'll come a point where you're like level 500 or something, and it's going to be three months until you get a new box. So <laughs> you'll be like, yeah. <laughs> but I think at that point, you probably would have most of the shit unlocked. I mean, yeah. I, I did buy boxes, like, but I've got a lot of stuff unlocked. Um, the, st- the, but- the weird thing with the boxes is that in the uh... same, in the same, in the same, uh, on the same forum, in the same thread, I saw one person say that it was not acceptable to put that kind of stuff in the game, especially not at launch. Like, it's only just launch. They've got all the money from launch. They shouldn't be selling boxes. Then that same person, further in the thread, made the distinction that it's okay for GTA V to sell in-game money to buy items because they're using it to further support the game, which means they can release updates for free. Oh, and, and Blizzard don't have to do that because they've got Big Daddy World of Warcraft making loads exactly of money and, and half the same. Stone. It's yeah, exactly I know, the same. Yeah, I know. And no, it, and I think that also speaks to a fundamental misunderstanding as to how companies work. Like, you, there are companies who have used one game to fund their other games. A high res springs to mind. Tribes wasn't making a profit, so they dumped Tribes in favour of Smite because Smite was making a profit. Blizzard and most other companies are not going to continue to support a game that is causing them to lose money by diverting funds from another game. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense to do that. Why would you continue to support something that is literally draining funds from your company? You wouldn't do it. So if you couldn't buy boxes, for instance, and say, I don't know, let's 12 months down the line, I don't think it's going to die out any time, even remotely, <laughs> to be honest, but like just as a kind of off the top of my head example, say 12 months down the line the player base isn't as big as it was, people aren't buying the game as much as they were, they're not selling loot boxes, the game is no longer turning a profit well, they'll just turn it off <laughs> just because they've got other franchises that earn the money, doesn't mean that one franchise can just free load their way through, you know, you can't the interesting get into the habit thing of doing with them that, is they remember bad. when it was announced at E3 no, at BlizzCon, and they didn't actually say what, if it was paid for or if yes. it was free to play, and they very they they dodged the question. See, so even at that point, they didn't know. They were like, "Well, yeah. what should we do?" I think then at some point they were like, "You know what? We're confident in in what this game is that people will buy it." And there are pros and cons to it being a paid for game. I mean, it means that it's more difficult to buy secondary accounts if you get caught cheating, which they've been banning people's battle net battle net accounts, the whole account for cheating on Overwatch. And that's it. Yeah. The IP ban them. They're just gone. It's like, well, well, not IP ban because you might IP ban a fucking internet cafe, but they ban the account. So the yeah. cost of buying a new account is very expensive. Um, and that will reduce cheaters. I've not seen any cheaters. I've played hundreds of games. Um, not any evident ones anyway. But it, it's good to know that's there. And the fact that it just, it's not like, I mean, CSGO, yeah, you have to buy that, but it's like £3 or something stupid you can buy it for. <laughs> yeah. So you can just be like, ah, I'm chesting an aimbot tonight. Oh, I bought a new copy of the game. It, it doesn't really matter as such. But yeah, you are definitely right. I think there's a lot of, um, it's almost like the EA hate, right? It's like, oh, it's from EA, it's shit. Pff, EA, <laughs> yeah. fuck you. It's yeah. like that, like, call cool to hate them. And at the end of the day, 
I don't give a shit about any game company. I just give a shit about what the end product is. And that game is really fucking enjoyable to me. Like, really enjoyable to me. Every game I have, every game I have, something crazy happens. Or, or something yeah. happens where I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, and I'll say this, and then we can get on to the next topic. But today, I was Bastion on the last point on um, Numbani defending. I switched into Bastion, and I was trying to be dirty with the turret. I was getting killed, but then my ultimate came up. You can rocket jump with Bastion's ultimate really high, so I fucking turn into the tank, fire into the ground, fly through the air, blasting him with the tank, just killing the enemy team. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and when I've done it, I'm like, yeah, like, and, and we won the game, like, and I'm like, wow. Like so, you get things like that which happen all the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I, in the last couple of days, I've had two things that have really like stuck out to me that have been like every this everybody. Is, this is why this. I, everybody, everybody. Yeah, but this. it's yeah, like this, this is why, why I played this game. Yeah. One of them was yeah. I got killed, which was just uh, it was such a it was a fluke, but it was an amazing fluke to see when it turned out to be player of the game, where Winston went full ape and just started beating the shit out of the team. I was Roadhog, and I was like. I might be able to stop him from beating the shit out of us here. I hooked the guy. I hooked him. He turned around as like, like just as I did it, so he was facing me, smacked me in the mouth, and I flew off the map. I was just gone. It was on Numbani. I just went straight off the edge, and I was like, "Well, I deserve that. That was pretty funny. That was like, I like, hold my hands up. That was my own fault. What a stupid thing to do." And then the day after, I was playing Roadhog again because I got the uh, I got the legendary skin where he's dressed like an islander, so I just play him all the time now, um, and. I managed to get five out of the six enemy team in the uh, the little Onval Sky on the first point where you've got that health pack in the little building just by the first point. Yeah, like it, yeah. They all went into that building. I don't know why they went in. I don't know whether they had a hive mind thing. Tell me, like, oh, them God. just fucking yes. wrecked them. Yeah, in yeah, the yeah. corner that the health is on. <laughs> and I just annihilated all of them. And I was just like, this is, this is fucking quality. <laughs> and it, isn't it's that just... what gaming's about? You see, this is like... Yeah, I'm getting yeah. older now, Mr. Kirioff, and I just want fun. And he's yeah. giving me loads of fun, and I'm just like, hey, man. <laughs> hey, For man, me, I'll take Overwatch it. is absolutely worth the money, because even if I wasn't playing it as much as I was, every time I did, I would enjoy myself, and something cool would happen. Every single game. There is not one game I've had, even when I've been on a crap team, or I've been crap, or I've been trying to learn how to play Widowmaker, and therefore screwed us all over by being terrible. At least once in every game... I've, I've, I've either I've done something or the enemy's done something. I'd be like, that was, that was awesome. Holy shit, that was good. And even when it happens to me, it's like, okay, that that guy wrecked me. That was quality. I can't think of another game that I've played pretty much ever where I'll happily get murdered by someone when they're good and just you know do something crazy that sees me binned. I can't think of one. But Overwatch it happens not all the time because we're not that bad. But when it does happen, what? it's like. Nice. Yeah, it's just it's just fun. It just it's fun, and everybody of every level can play the game. And every time, uh, there's not really time constraints to it because the game it takes ten minutes. If you just want a game, you can just have a game and go about yeah. your day. Unless like you're doing you the arcade mode where all the heroes have got extra health oh. and extra charge. <laughs> seventeen oh, just minutes. <laughs> just we had a thing. we had a seventeen minute game doing that. Just as I think it was five Winston's and a Lucio versus uh, just five Winston's and a Lucio. It took forever. It went into overtime on the first point when the time ran out and it went on for like another 15 minutes. It was... It, my eyes bled at the end of it. I couldn't even see. I was like, oh. But again, absolutely quality. Stupid game mode, but dead good. Let's let's move on to something else. Let's move on to less, less happy times. Oh, no, no Man's Sky has been delayed again, right? Hmm. It's... I, I mean, they only really fair, relatively recently announced a release date. Um, but it's been delayed from that release date, which wouldn't be that newsworthy, except people love a bit of No Man's Sky, so when it's announced that it's released, the creator, Sean Murray, um, made a nice tweet. I have received loads of death threats this week, but don't worry, Hello Games now looks like the house from Home Alone, hashtag pillow <laughs> fort. And he said, tell me when it's safe to remove the marbles and oil from the stairs, it's getting really cumbersome and I need the toilet. I'll be honest, I never ha- I never thought I'd see, of all games, No Man's Sky being the thing that people are getting really, really pissy about. Like, I get that it's interesting and it looks like it could be pretty good. But it's not a typical console game, delay, is it? 
like that's what gets me with it. I know it's on PC as well, but it's the the amount of like pushing of that game Sony have been doing is. I mean, it was yeah. on the is it the Tonight Show, one of the big American talk shows. Yeah, and it's like, I, yeah, it's weird. Like, it's really weird. I don't know. It's really weird to me. Like the type of person I would imagine writing those stupid. I mean, because they're not real death threats, right? But the type of dick who's writing that shit. You know, you I really I'll be honest. To be playing a game like that, you know, you know. I see, I see them playing Call of Duty. I'm not going to lie. The people yeah. who do that stuff, like when when they rebalance the sniper rifle in Black Ops or Black Ops Three, whatever it was, and they got <laughs> and you know the devs were getting death threats because they changed the what was it? Changed the reload speed. Something. Mate, I want a fucking no scope somebody and they fucked me. <laughs> I want a 360 MLG someone whilst <laughs> fucking their mum. Apparently, is <laughs> apparently yeah. the chosen insult over Xbox Live. It's it's just. When I see stuff like that, I feel bad for the person on the receiving end, obviously, because you don't want to be sitting there. All you're doing is making a game. Like that that's it. You you're making a game, you want people to play your game and have fun. That's that is literally your job. To provide entertainment for people through something that you have to pour a hell of a lot of heart and soul yeah, into. Yeah, people it to be good. people feel connected to it. That's why though. And they're like, "Mate, this is my game." Well, fuck fuck, I was waiting for this fucking game for years, man. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck it, and then they could create. It, this is bullshit though. It, like it, it, they're quite clever responses from Sean. Like he's just taking a piss, obviously. But it's like, yeah, um, it's, it's one of those. Things I, I where... worry. I worry about this game. I still worry about it even today. Like it's been impressive. Some of the demos they've shown, especially on that Tonight Show, whatever the hell it was called, where they were, it showed you like a full demo, and, and it was impressive. Yeah, but I still worry about it because. I think people are going to say it's got no content, <laughs> and it, which is funny considering what we've just been talking about. But I think they're going to yeah. be like, "What do I do? I'm just flying around, landing on planets. There's I think a there's bit of combat and there's some trading in it, apparently." But there's also that thing where they've said that there's not that great a chance that you'll bump into another person because of how big yeah. the universe is. I wonder how many people are looking at it going, oh my god, it's a space MMO and you can go anywhere and do anything. I can't wait to pick this up with my friends and oh god, they are literally a hundred million, million, million light years away and I can't get to them. Like, I I could see that happening just because, let's be honest, people get attached to stuff, they get attached to games, they get attached to, to franchises. But like me and you play but, Daisy, <laughs> it takes three hours to fight each other. Yeah, but even worse, because you're in an infinite universe instead of just one <laughs> big map. Um, Where are you? Like, I, um, I'm I, I'm a trillion light years away. Uh <laughs> Okay, that no. was so frustrating. Didn't we do that for a stream once where we played that for like three hours, finally met up, well, we, we had some know, guns, and we then we just We didn't know the layout died. of the map. I still don't know the layout of the map. And our way of finding each other was what side is the coast? You're like, it's on my left-hand side. And I'd be like, okay, I will run with it on my right-hand side. <laughs> 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 yeah, we'll Except if we were up. already past each other, that wouldn't help because we'd just be running in opposite. And that happened once where I ended up at the top of the map where it wasn't finished. Because there was no like the water just stopped. <laughs> it was just like, but yeah, it's like, people do get attached. They get really, really attached to games and franchises, and and like and it applies to like films and books and stuff as well. Like all the people who who have a go at um, George R R Martin telling him to finish the books before he dies, which is like, <laughs> yeah. chill out, but chill out, mate. Um, I think he's got a bit left in him. I think he's he's probably all right. It's it's so harsh. It's just people are like, yeah, but he's fat. He's old. He's going to die next year. And you're like, oh, not. I mean, you know, it's not set in stone. <laughs> hey, Winston sure Churchill was fat and smoked a cigar and drank champagne every day, and he lived till he was ninety odd. Yeah, Do you know George an interesting Martin, fact about like... Winston, Winston Churchill in 1918, he got a letter sent to him from an admiral, and it was the very first recorded ever. Is this use? The... Of, is of... it lol or was it no, oh my like omg that, oh my god yeah because didn't OMG. he didn't he say omg like with the with the with the full stops <laughs> in between and then it, in brackets afterwards didn't he write oh my god to explain <laughs> what omg meant <laughs> so he invented oh my god so every time you see that ladies and gentlemen he's trying to make it, th- it i like the fact that back then it's like even then people were tr- people were trying to make stuff a thing it's like i'm gonna make omg a thing I'm going to have to explain it because Winston Churchill won't know what it means unless I say it. It's like, can you imagine putting that in a tweet? This was amazing, I, lol. Open brackets, laugh out loud, close brackets. <laughs> I like to think Winston got it and was like, my God, and, and then made it happen. Life-changing. He just starts using it around the office. Someone hands him a piece of paper. He just goes, <laughs> but like this, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Winston. <laughs> We need you to be the Prime Minister. The Nazis are attacking. Oh, my God. It never actually happened like that. 
but you know, you know he just went O M G, and then he just got on with it. <laughs> what was like? To- yeah, people getting like ridiculously attached to stuff to the point where it's like, this is what I want it to be. This is what it will be. It'll be great. But they haven't really researched it all that well. They haven't looked into it that great. They haven't really, <laughs> they haven't really done like. The, Surely, what is it, on the, the due internet, diligence. an argument takes place without any information. <laughs> well, this is the thing. I just, I really hope that when No Man's Sky comes out, it turns out to be everything that the the people who are sending, you know, snotty, whiny death threats about has wanted it to be. Because if not, it the internet is going to be just a cesspool for literal months if it doesn't turn out to be everything they've wanted and more, isn't it? It's going to be unbearable absolutely everywhere. But it is so, it's so, like, bigged up to the extreme that I don't... I think people will be like, well, hang on, this hasn't got everything... Imaginable yeah. in it, so uh, can it can it be everything that they want? <laughs> I think or? I'm going to enjoy this game when it comes out, but I just worry for it because of the mass market advertising that that, that it's had. Yeah, it's still it's given still, the type of game it is. It's not by far really... the most baffling marketing push I think I've ever seen. Just in this yeah, industry I think as a whole, it is as well. I've just it's weird. I mean, I thought what was it unraveled? I thought that was a little odd because it got such a big push. But then that was like a cutesy indie platformer. Yeah, you know, little, had a, little game. Had an adorable yeah. little, it had an adorable little main character and it was it, it was kind of... It wasn't presented as a kid's game, but I got the vibe that it wasn't aimed at like 30-year-olds or anything like it's that. It's kind it of was, like, you know, Uncharted, the, like, the levels of like hype that gets or like a new Gears game or something or a new Halo game. It's yeah. kind of like that with this. And it's like... Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's just good on Sony for like it's a new IP. Let's go crazy! But the thing is, is it ever going to be more than a new IP? What could you even do for No Man's Sky going, Two? Yeah. If you've got a procedurally generated universe that is literally never ending, it's infinite. What? Where <laughs> are you going to go to hell? I mean, I don't know where you'd even go from there. You've <laughs> literally what? got ev- you've got every environment you could possibly get, and it's all it's all there it's all discoverable whether you'll actually discover all of it yourself I, I can't wait for the matter. videos to come out where it's fucking broke because it the level of generation <laughs> procedural generation this is, the, <laughs> where is this just going to be like broke just doesn't work like really broken like oh look at this there's a dinosaur with a I don't know tree for a face or something all kinds of like no man's game puns and stuff going around yeah, where yeah, people yeah, are, yeah. it's like oh well I landed my ship on this planet and now the planet doesn't exist and my ship's gone with it and I can't do anything or this so. other planet spawned inside my planet and if- <laughs> yeah yeah uh, <laughs> mind you it's not VR? it's not a Ubisoft game so it should be fine <laughs> it should be fine yeah. why are they even making now ain't they getting um, taken over by Vivendi some hostile takeover Vivendi have just taken over Gameloft which oh, we, the mobile uh, game company. Yeah, Ubisoft is already part... No, Gameloft was already part of Ubisoft. You know what, we've got this as a topic, we're just looking at it oh, now. Uh. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> Vivendi has seized control of Guillemot Brothers, mobile publisher. I'm assuming I pronounced that correctly. Guillemot, Guillemot, Guillemot. Guillemot, Guillemot, Guillemot. Gameloft. Uh, back in February, French media corporation Vivendi sought to seize control of Ubisoft by aggressively buying shares of the company. Mm-hmm. So you are correct. That's still an ongoing process, but as of today, Vivendi's strategy has led it to acquire a majority ownership at Gameloft, the mobile publisher founded by Ubisoft head honchos, the Guillemot Brothers. A few months ago, Vivendi purchased 30% of Gameloft and was tempting shareholders to part with their stock by offering 50% over the market value for their shares, which is mental. Vivendi's strategy paid off as it's now in charge of Gameloft, publisher behind Asphalt and Modern Combat. Isn't that that crappy one that um, Schwarzenegger did a load of uh, adverts for? No, Modern, no. Uh, M- Modern Combat is a Call of Duty clone on mobile. Asphalt, oh, is it? Uh, is a shitty racing game, yeah. They're not oh, very good okay. games. They, they, Gameloft, they've got like a Halo clone and it's called something very similar to that and shit like that. <laughs> but they must sell well. It, mobile Strike is the one you're thinking of because it's like, Mobile Strike. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like Clash of uh, Kings, Clash I think of it's called. Kings. Clash there's of, another yeah. one, yeah, where there's like a woman who's in a coffee bar and she runs down the street with a claymore, goes, Wah! It's like, I'm pretty- yeah. I'm pretty sure at this point Vivendi are a <laughs> Vivendi are massive. Vivendi are massive. They're huge massive. Now at this got point. a shitload of money. Um, uh, and I oh think my god, yeah, they've got they've got the canal. They own group. a load of stuff. Canal Plus, yeah, yeah, um, yeah the French published uh, television thing in it. Universal Music Group. They don't own the, that, do they? Jesus Christ! Vivendi, a, uh, a mass media company. It says, yeah. Oh Jesus Christ! I had no idea. Oh, they got Daily Motion as well. 
Yeah. Telecom Italia. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They, okay, own a, so, they own a load of shit. Yeah, they are. They are pretty big. <laughs> they are. I'd imagine if they want to take over your uh, your company, you're not going to be doing a huge amount to stop them. Um, and I'm assuming at some point we'll see the uh, the article announcing that Ubisoft is now taken over by them as well. Because I don't see how they stop that. Ubisoft doing not, anyway, Def Jam records as well. <laughs> It's, that's crazy, that is. I had no idea that Universal Music Group was owned by Vivendi. I thought, well, funnily enough, I thought it was owned by Universal, which I thought was its own separate company, but apparently not. So, good news for the people at Gameloft. You are now owned by a vast, global, uh, multi-company spanning... They're meant to be a bastard conglomerate as well. Like, I'm yeah, sure they tried they... to do something. It might have even been with Blizzard. They tried to do something with somebody, um, and they screwed somebody over. It might have been Blizzard years ago when they were publishing a game on console, and there was some issue with it. But they're like... Um, uh, they're just like relentless after cash and they don't care they're like if you think EA is bad that these are like yeah. the worst yeah, the um, if they own they Ubisoft good well reputation. get ready for fucking Assassin's Creed twice a year <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and Far Cry every week <laughs> oh look <laughs> Far, a Far Cry a week every single oh uh, what day is it? It's Tuesday. Oh, the- nice. Can you Far Cry the- tomorrow. <laughs> Can you imagine the Let's Play channels? It'd be like, hey guys, welcome to Let's Play of Far Cry whatever. And then Far like, Cry 92. Like six other Far Cry Let's Plays all at the same time. Six episodes but a day. you can't tell what's different. <laughs> but they all cycle one after the other. So every day, one Let's Play finishes and a new one starts, but you've already got five running. <laughs> <laughs> so you've constantly just got nothing but... Oh man! Oh, that is. I mean, I'm not. Just, I'm not a massive fan of I Game Loft, but I, that's not host- a nice thing to happen. It's not. This, this, that this is, is not what real. I, I. This is my understanding of these hostile takeovers. Now, be, bear in mind, I'm not a stockbroker or anything like that. But because they're publicly listed, they can just turn up and buy shares off anyone. When they own yeah. so much, then they've got a controlling amount, so they can just tell the company what to do. Obviously, it's a massive amount. Now, normally, what happens is. The owner, or like the you know the people in charge of the company, retain an amount so they will always be in charge. So, say if you needed thirty um, percent to control the company, the the boss would have thirty percent, right? And he would never sell them, so he'd always control the company. But I think this is much different with uh, people like Ubisoft because there isn't somebody who just owns all of the shares. And I yeah. think they can buy them off the people. It gets very complicated because there's different types of shares and shit like that. But um, what they have to do is they have to go in at a much higher rate than what they're worth to buy them. Like if it was worth a quid, they might have to pay two quid a share. Or they offer more money for it. So people sell. So if you held shares, because think of the people who've got shares in these companies. They don't care what the company's doing. They're sitting no. there like look, looking in their fucking moleskin. <laughs> port- That's not moleskin, but the, the moleskin, moleskin portfolio. Oh, oh, look at this. Um, um, Bertie, look at what he got here. Um, 53,000 shares in um, Ubisoft. It's fucking Ubisoft. Um, uh, we bought them for a dollar a share. Um, this gentleman over here, Bobby Vivendi, he will give us $10 a share. Yes, Bertie, sell the shares. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> right. But without I'm, I'm... the moleskin, and it's all online. <laughs> <laughs> I have actually just had a look at the, uh, the thing about I the hostile takeover. Works. Yeah, go on, and tell me, have it's... I got it right or have I like, just butchered it? No, no, you're absolutely correct. Uh, Vivendi has been, after this was published in uh, the 26th, or the 26th of the 2nd, 2016, on Eurogamer, okay. uh, Vivendi has been after a stake in Ubisoft since last autumn. It bought a 6.6% share of the company in October. That's 7.36 million shares, which came with a price tag of $161 million. Yeah. So, last autumn... Yeah. They just they just dropped 161 million dollars on shares in Ubisoft. Later that month, Vivendi upped its stake to 10.39 percent and began mulling a purchase of GameLoft, the mobile company founded by Ubisoft boss Yves Guillemot and his brothers. So, yeah, they've so they, they probably now spent have... a good three four hundred million on this so far. They're after and that. Then. They've got game and now they've got GameLoft, and presumably they will continue pursuing Ubisoft. 
it's like it's like war, isn't it? It's like yeah. they're slowly, Money war. They're slowly yeah. pushing the front forward until they can get to a point where they can just strike and take it it's over. It's a problem with capitalist economies, though. Isn't it? <laughs> Whoever's got the most money can just do what they like, and it's like we need, we need Comrade Corbyn to come in and found the, uh, <laughs> no, the communist don't. utopia. He needs to go away. He needs to go away. <laughs> I thought he was going to be good, and I just look at him and I'm embarrassed for him now. He's Whenever not really he doing talks, anything, is he? He doesn't do anything. Although then again, at the moment, he doesn't need to do that much because the cameras are like, just, just slagging each other didn't off he, constantly. Didn't, wasn't terrible. he caught on fucking record saying like, fuck it, we shouldn't even be in Europe, even though he's saying we should? Wasn't, didn't I hear something about that? Like he yeah, said well, something, we'd be better he's changed, out of it. He's but changed then, stances <laughs> before. And, well, he did the same thing where he said that um, the, the London oh. mayor... Uh, Sadiq Khan, the guy who won the London mayoral election. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he said that Sadiq Khan had shared a platform with terrorists. And then <laughs> after Sadiq Khan became mayor, he said that it was something on the lines of he's the right man for the job and he looks forward to seeing how he does. And he's, you know, Sadiq Khan is a great man. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so last month he was a terrorist. This month, salt of the earth, lovely guy. I seen him <laughs> on the news dinner and he was like, what? he went, we come from different backgrounds. His dad was a plumber and mine was a stockbroker. Right. Great. Welcome to the leaders of our fucking country. I ate, yes. I ate stockbroker bloke. Country. Represents the common man, indeed. <laughs> Daddy was a high-powered stockbroker and he sent me to Eton. <laughs> where I met Boris. In. And now Boris is trying to fuck me up the arse. <laughs> We're all in it together, What's which the- is why I sold my shares in the Panama Tax Haven Company for thirty thousand yeah. pounds. No, but it's but okay because I declared small, it. No, a small thirty thousand. Oh. <laughs> a small thirty thousand. The fuck? I've never even. I've literally never even had. I think in in, in the course of my I'd working cry. life, thirty thousand <laughs> pounds. I'm, no, but bro, it's only a small amount that you know. I just sold a few shares. I'd shank some for that right now. I sold them to the Vivendi. <laughs> I would, I would, I would shank someone in an alley for that. If you're willing to pay me, there you go. Like, that's pretty d- bloke. That's a bit dear for a hitman. Come on. I mean, no. a crisp fifty pound note. What about that? Uh, <laughs> I've got to buy a replacement knife though. What if I have to leave it in the body? I mean, with the body. No, I'll give you the knife. In the body. If now, if there's a murder and there's like a brand new knife, <laughs> you see it on the news and a crisp fifty pound note on the floor, you know who's committed it. That would be that would be the like the best <laughs> sort of super villain. Like just imagine like uh, what's his name Fisk from Red Devil, not Red Devil. What is it? What's his name? <laughs> what is it? I've forgotten the name of it now. Daredevil. Daredevil. Why would Fisk Red have a fifty pound note? He's a billionaire, yeah, ain't he? He wouldn't have. A he could use. He note. could. He could use that as his as like his calling card for when he's had someone murdered. They're dead, but they've got a crisp fifty pound note in the mouth. It just hey, leaves it there. It's like a tip a for the Punisher series. <laughs> Fucking hell! I'll watch that. That's good. That was quality. the best part of of the last series of Daredevil. Yeah, he was Daredevil he was, was a bit shit, but the Punisher. <laughs> I, he was he was by far the best. I still I mean, I know that in the show, you know, Daredevil is like he he is not just a blind guy, but but at heart, it, to me, he'll always just be a blind guy. <laughs> it's like what's your special power? <laughs> I'm blind. It's just it's just. It might have been a good show, but it still didn't fill me with, you know, with yeah, but the awe. Punisher ain't got no special power. He just kills people. With yeah, yeah, that's, that's his special power. <laughs> <laughs> his special power is he can get drilled with a power drill in the foot. Oh and yeah, then just and, get up and well, murder yeah, he's just hard. Afterwards. He's just like a hard knock. <laughs> <laughs> he's quality. Uh, this has got nothing to do with Vivendi, anyway. but anyway, yeah. So Vivendi are trying to take off you, take over Ubisoft, and they're taking. They will. Off, it, 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 by the based off what that. you've just said, there they will. That's yeah, they're point. actually going to take Probably. it. Got and no then you'll get Assassin's Creed every week. No, Far Cry every week. Yep, it's <laughs> good luck. <laughs> good luck, Ubisoft. Christ. Moving on, Minecraft. Hang on, Vivendi There's... own Machete Music. Machete Music. Machete Wait, Music is an urban music label owned by Universal Music Group, which is owned by Vivendi. Machete. Who's on, mu- anyway. who's on Machete Music? It's got to be someone good on Machete Music, surely. It's The genre of music is reggaeton? Reggaeton? Or somebody, I've never even heard of that. Uh, oh, oh, hang on. Um, yeah, it's Mac and Daddy. The Mac, I don't know. I don't know who that is. I don't Mac think that's earning them loads of money, but they John own it. Omar. Extreme. 
Extreme. That's yeah. quality. Extreme. Oh, it's not the extreme I thought it was. Oh, they focus on the Latin genre of bacata. So there you go. If you're in, in, in for some Latin uh, bacata, then extreme you guys. Anyway, Minecraft. This is quite Yay! a title. Look at this. Ad block. <laughs> Minecraft forbids building promotions. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll give I'll give uh, I'll give Graham Smith that one. This is off Rock Paper Shotgun, and uh, there are there there are now rules. There are rules. Mojang have updated their commercial guidelines to say that it's no longer acceptable for companies to build or commission others to build a Minecraft mod, map, or server that promotes or markets unrelated products or services in playable form. So it means Coca Cola can't pay you to operate a Minecraft server where people scurry in the shadows of Titanic Coke bottles. And apparently, it also means that the producers of Transformers: The Last Night can't pay to advertise their movie by operating a server in which people scurry in the shadows of the of Mark Wahlberg's head. Basically, no <laughs> advertising. You're not allowed to do it. You can't have a Minecraft server that is an interactive tour of Pepsi's new uh, fizzy drinks factory. You know, you... I don't like Pepsi, but if you if you give it to me and I, and I'm like I need it, I'll drink it. But I mean, if, I don't know what this is, right? Because. <laughs> Coke, I can drink the Coke. It's bad, but I'll drink that shit. But Diet Coke's okay as well. But Pepsi, bro, I, only if I'm, I, I need it. I can't tell the difference. I don't know why. <laughs> I honestly can't. It's... I just can't tell the difference. It's It tastes exactly the same. What are you even made of, apart from 20 grams, well, 30, 40 grams of sugar? I think that's it, isn't it? It's just sugar, water, and fizz. And brown shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what brown, brown shit. shit. A bit of brown shit. Brown shit. Just throwing a bit of dirt brown off shit. the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's that. In the factory, they don't. They just don't clean the floor. Hang they on. just get scoops C- off. Clean this up for me, then. So you can't have, you can't build promotional maps anymore, which must no. have been a thing. I've never heard of that. But they must have clamped down on the, um, you know, where people would set, like have their own MMO server. I remember that Athene guy had that. Yes, shit. Like they've that they cut. They've they stopped that quite a while ago. This is like a, I guess like almost an extension of that, yeah. um, whereby you'd have stuff where, for instance, there was a thing that appeared a couple, I want to say last year sometime, where someone built built a working cell phone in I Minecraft. A, like a cell? <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> whereby you could call people from Minecraft and it would call an actual phone. Obviously, wow. that's not not real because it was all set up by a telecoms company and uh, you can't build a real phone in Minecraft I was gonna say, as far I as I'm they, aware as far that. as I'm aware it's not even possible um, but you can't do that now because that's like that is using the that's essentially using Mojan's work to create advertisements without them getting anything for it I guess is the main motivation behind it because uh, it's not really the same as someone coming up with a an advert from scratch and shooting it and you know actors and all that stuff instead you've got like a like a guided tour of i mean they talk about an example which is the tate the tate modern did a minecraft map or something like that you could tour around and it would show you around the place yeah they had like recreations of art in there and stuff but (laughs) yeah but they look really good yeah why you do that i don't know but you i built a titan once i built a warhound titan remember that (laughs) I don't remember I've, the Titan. Don't you? I, yeah, yeah, you must remember it because this was ages ago. We had like a crappy Minecraft server, and I, I, I was like, "Come here, bloke! Come here, bloke!" And we went to a, a like a secluded location, and I'm no, yes, like no, Superman you're right, or whatever. <laughs> and you could just build anything, and I built like a Titan, and then we detonated like loads of like bombs all over it. Well, and yeah, because I the server. Yeah, because I can. Rem- I remember that was that server was when <laughs> you tunneled away. <laughs> from everybody for about 10 minutes and then detonated a nuclear bomb underground because you could build nuclear bombs in the mod that we had running. Yeah. And then, and then I believe the admins, <laughs> the admins who weren't us uh, because we didn't know what we were doing then took away your power to uh, give yourself anything you liked and you were just a normal pleb like everyone else. <laughs> I seem to remember. It ruined they the got, server. They I got there yeah. and I, I just didn't remember a couple of the admins got there and they are like, what the fuck is this? What have you done? You've ruined it. You've like you've ruined the map. You've literally ruined it. What are we supposed to do? It was a colossal explosion. It was massive. It was quality. We were it's paying a silly for game. it. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Blow that shit up. Literally, <laughs> literally paying for it. I tell you what. You know, we talked about TV. Are you looking forward to this? I know you are. 
Mirror's Edge TV show is in the works. Excited, hang on, bloke. Hang on, hang on. Excited. Bloke. Right, you've played Mirror's Edge, didn't you, the new one? How is it? Because people have told me it's just a, it's stupidly on rails, like stupidly, and you can't it's... go anywhere else. I, I know Mirror's I would... Edge, the first one, wasn't that, like, you know, you could, it just wasn't free yeah, for I mean, I, or, but this I recorded really the, linear. I recorded the first 20 minutes. I did play quite a bit more than that. I would absolutely agree with that. It's just like, this is the path, follow the path. There is no other path. That's just what you do. You just... That's that's it. There's no exploration or anything. It's just you go from point A to point B whilst jumping over stuff and around stuff. In, I have to say, convoluted ways quite often, it felt like. So, like, you, you know, you'd see a gap that you could probably clearly jump, but there's a convenient obstacle that means rather than doing what any sensible person would do, which would be climb over the obstacle, jump the gap, and then carry on with your day, instead you go along the level, then you go up the level, then you go down again, then you go round, then you go back to where you would have ended up if you could just leap slightly to the side. It was... It's alright, I guess. Nothing particularly special. I know people were excited for Mirror's Edge coming back, but I don't I don't really see a, a particularly yeah. successful show coming out of it. Although, it is being made by uh, Endemol Shine Studios, which I, I thought I recognised, but they produced Big Brother, and they produced MasterChef, which is a quality programme. But what, how that qualifies them. And in fact, looking at it, The Biggest Loser, Big Brother, MasterChef, or Reality TV. Admittedly, uh, MasterChef is not quite as horrendously shit as The Big Brother or The Biggest Loser. But I don't know how much experience they've got doing actual scripted, scripted stuff. I'm assuming that they've got some. I'd have thought. Otherwise, that's a very weird <laughs> choice. Yeah, it's probably just a cost thing, though, isn't it? Get somebody cheap in. Yeah, it could be. You're it's... gonna get Spielberg, in, are you? <laughs> no, that's <laughs> Spielberg <laughs> doing Mirror's Edge. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Hey, I've been told Bridge of Spies is a good film. Have you seen that? No, no, I've not no. seen that. Yeah, no, I'm waiting for the man in that's... High Castle to come back. That's what I'm waiting oh, for. Oh shit, when's that coming back? I'm sure it's this year. I'm sure it's in like, a couple of months. Spoiler warning. When Hitler at the end, <laughs> <laughs> and he's yes. watching, and he's like, oh, "What the fuck? I don't understand." Oh, it's I don't so understand. good. It's so it's good. Like that show is parallel universe machine. Hitler, he must have. He's got to have. He's. I. I. I think my my current kind of theory is that he hasn't got like a parallel universe machine, but he also has access to the tapes that they're getting from the alternate, like the alternate dimension, the alternate universe. So, like, there's maybe multiple copies of these tapes, and it shows, like, alternate timelines, doesn't it? So, you well, see... It shows the, the Nazis losing, don't it? And he can't believe it, because yeah. it wins in his timeline, doesn't it? And he's like, I think it's going to be a case of he's using the information that he gets from the tapes that he also has access to. To because, win the war, like. Because there's got to be, like, the rebels have got to have, like, one set of tapes, right? And then the Nazis got the other set of tapes. So, they're, they're yeah. basically using information from this alternate timeline against each other because it seems it, it seemed to me to be far too convenient at the start where it was like oh yeah we keep you know we've got to keep them out of the hands of the nazis the nazis haven't got them we've got them you know whether you know we're going to use them to fight back and all this kind of stuff and i was thinking i don't think it's gonna be that simple i think there's going to be like multiple copies of this stuff floating around either someone else is copying it or you know there's there's some kind of weird way in which they get this information and get it down on tape that means that there's more than one. I just wanted... I, I really want to see what happens in the next series because it was kind of... It started out being hinted at and it was like, oh, it's all about the tape, this tape, this tape's amazing. What the hell? We need to find out what's on this tape. And then when it turns out it's an alternate reality thing, I was sitting in my chair, I was like, yes, I knew it, I knew it, this is going to be great. And then it stops. <laughs> and it's like you don't get anything else until the next series. And I'm, I'm, But Hitler... I, I mean, I can't remember the name of the guy, but he's there to kill Hitler, ain't he? And he gets like Hitler's golden luger or whatever I was thinking. Yeah, and yeah. And Hitler just like looks at him and he's like, and he just uses it on his He like convinces him to himself away. It's amazing. Anyway, it's Hitler's such a, not a good person. The acting in that is dead good. Like when they put the it's when good, they put that, that show. When they put that film in the cinema and they see the guy that they've been helping who's you know, yeah, yeah, to and be, he's like executed people. Yeah, he's going to be in the resistance <laughs> like and says he's a Nazi. Uh, like, Jesus Christ. I thought that was so well done. That was so good. It was oh god, what a good show. I I'm glad that one got greenlit because there was like a couple of other ones. 
and and it was like whoever voted the most for it was the one they were going to make and i yeah. watched the because it, it, the pilot episode they made for like these four or th- three or four different shows and that one just trashed the rest of them and rightfully yeah. so <laughs> it was like whoa yeah. this looks crazy it does not I mean that I need, to, anyway. I need to read the book and i ain't got around to it because philip k dick is a, is a really good author but yeah, yeah, I've not read I the book just... either. I, I, the thing I remember from the first episode, I think we've gone off on crazy tangents here, but um, was where he pulls his, his lorry over and it, he thinks it's snowing. He's like, it's funny, yeah. And the copper stops and he's like, oh no, it's, they're just burning the disabled people or something at the local incinerator. It's like, oh God, yeah. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was. It did not pull any punches with that, did it? It was just like, oh yeah, the Nazis won and uh, burning the elderly. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. I can see this is going to be... Uh, Gonna be nice and light, some nice light viewing. <laughs> Although, I, mind you, it's probably too soon to talk about Game of Thrones spoilers, ain't it? We won't. We won't Hang do on. that. No, the, the 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 Japanese guy from the, the the Ministry of Trade or whatever his name was. What the hell was going on with him at the end? Because he's sitting on a bench and he's seeing a different reality. This is where he sees is... New York, don't he, or something? No, um, he... not in New York, California at the end. Or yeah. somewhere yeah yeah, yeah LA's are in LA aren't they he's, the he sees he sees Coast. LA but in the alternate American, reality where yeah, where they where America won and yeah. that kind of makes me wonder as well like are the tapes getting back to that timeline because someone is able to travel into the other reality so like they are literally capturing footage of it and if that's the case so like you've got you got the Nazi guy executing the prisoners who he's pretending to be he's pretending to be part of the resistance but they yeah. see him on the tape like they see him on the film he's executing prisoners he's obviously he's obviously a Nazi but then you've got the Japanese dude who is in an LA where America won is there like yeah. three timelines like is the is the Nazi dude and the American LA are they the same time period like timeline or are there multiple timelines like more than two so like they're seeing one where Germany is still kind of prosecuting the war, for instance. So like maybe the one where he's executing them, they're seeing like the push to 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 take over the US. And their timeline has already happened, and the one they looked at, it was in the midst of happening, which is why the dude was in uniform executing people instead of pretending to be a resist like uh, being the yeah. resistance and being a spy. And then the Japanese dude is in fact seeing a different timeline to that one again where America's won and there is no push. The Nazis have been defeated. There's just... The last couple of episodes of that show just completely opened it up where it's like all manner of mad shit could happen next season. <laughs> like, please, please just give it me now. But apparently, yes, the second season of 10 episodes has been announced for a 2016 release according to Wikipedia. But so, you're not allowed to talk about Game of Thrones, below, but we can talk about the one thing where uh, a certain fella who came back from the dead um, was not happy with being pissed on. And uh, no. grabbed the gentleman's head. And no. just, uh, well, <laughs> that was the, was... that's the best scene in the whole fucking series so far to me. So he good. just stands there and the guy turns around and he just goes... <laughs> yeah. He just walks up. It's like, even, and he's even not, got like blood and brains on him, and he doesn't even care. He just yeah, walks yeah. Up. Like, we're not count. We're not even counting that as a spoiler. It's not a spoiler. It's not like a plot point. It's All you need to know is some dude got his face pushed through the back of his head through a wall. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh god, what a scene! What a quality scene! I mean, this series has been good for quality scenes, but that that was a quality scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Right, let's do the last couple of topics. So, first one. Former Lionhead devs take Hearthstone-style Fable Fortune to Kickstarter with Microsoft's blessing. So, Lionheart is... Lionheart. Lionhead is... He's a YouTuber. Is, <laughs> well, I've, I've been watching him play Total Warhammer. Yeah, you're going to talk dead. about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Fable lives on in collectible card game form. Fable Fortune is a free-to-play Hearthstone-style game Lionhead has been working on in secret alongside the, the cancelled Fable Legends. Microsoft shut them down in March, leaving 100 people looking for a new job, but the core Fable, Fa- Fable Fortune development team convinced Fable Open and Microsoft to license the franchise fees with the game, and under a new developer called Flaming Foul Studios have taken to Kickstarter to ask for £250,000, do excuse me. And so far they have raised... They've failed, basically. 28961 with 27 days to go. It's yeah, going to be... It's- it's failed it's probably not going to work I think that's a fail yeah I uh, yeah when's the last time there's actually been a successful Kickstarter 
seems a long time. Uh, Dark Souls board game, I remember. Yeah, that was. But that's not really um, a game. Game, I suppose. I was gonna, I was gonna say the uh, the Rooster Teeth million dollars but card game, but that's cheating because they had massive interest in it. They only asked for ten thousand dollars, and I believe they've raised oh. over a million. So, and they, I mean, they even said it was just for, it was literally just for uh, publicity. Like, if you go on Kickstarter and you blow away your goal, I mean, pledged of ten thousand dollars. One million one hundred seventeen thousand and ninety four dollars with eight days to go. It's just for headlines, ain't it? Doing that, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, that that fable game. I don't think it, it's not going to hit the goal on Kickstarter. I would have thought, and it's a very strange thing to try and come back with. Um, for the guys from from Lionhead, like some of them anyway. I, you're not going to get. Sorry, you're just not going to get any traction with a Hearthstone style card game. It's not going to happen. There is, this... there is, there is a, there are two collectible card games that have any sort of traction. One is Magic for people who like Magic, and one is Hearthstone, which is everyone else. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You can't. There's no market to break into there. There's no point. It's like you could come up with an amazing collectible card game, but at best you can hope for a very small niche audience that comes back time and time again. You're not going to get anything else. And I don't. Maybe I'm just like horribly cynical, or just a bit of an arsehole. <laughs> but <laughs> I do not understand trying to kickstart free-to-play games. I know you need yeah. the initial development money to make it, but you're you're asking people to you're asking people to pay money to play a game that your end audience is going to play for free. It just seems, it just seems a bit crazy. I mean, I know, I know. There's things like card backs, and you know, you can get a special pack where you get like ten random cards, like you know, the Hearthstone card opening packs, all that stuff. I know you can give those away for money for Kickstarter. I understand that, but that is a reward for a game that other people play for free that hasn't been made yet, which you're having to pay for without receiving anything at the time i know that's how kickstarter works anyway but it just feels like an added step of complication with free to play when it yeah. comes to like funding a game and you get a copy of the game at the end i can see why you do it because it's like okay well i get the game i've funded the game i get the game great i've just basically pre-ordered the game they just need to make it first fantastic with a free to play game it's this could fail straight away and i paid money to it i've paid money for something that doesn't cost anything when it's finished but I'm paying for it anyway. I don't know. It just adds that extra kind of just like a weird thing that I can't get my head around as to as to why you would. Like I just wouldn't. I don't think I'd ever kickstart a free to play game. Thinking about it. Someone's gonna tell me now that Star Citizen is free to play. I don't think it is. Um but yeah, it's like I I just I'd be shocked. Massively it's shocked. It's not, is it? <laughs> I know, I don't think I don't, it is. I don't is. even know anything about that game. Sure, I'm pretty sure anything. it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been. I've not kept up with it for quite a long time now, and surely if it was, it would be announced and people would lose their shit at this point. Surely. Um, well, let's talk yeah. about Total War Warhammer then, because I played it for a little bit. Um, now I remember Rome's launch, Rome Two, and it was an absolute shit show. Um, yes, of epic proportions that was. I was really gutted because I. I mean, it's probably playable now, but um, I really like that era of history especially for the battles and stuff because i mean everybody loves the roman legion riz right against the barbarian hordes and the carthaginians that's why, and all that stuff. that's why everyone loved rice son of rome <laughs> they didn't that's a lie <laughs> but yeah no, I don't. <laughs> um so yeah um that was a disaster show at launch this i've loaded it up and i've played about an hour of it it seems magnificently optimized like i was getting like 60 fps i mean i've only got a 780 um my gpu and i was getting like 60 fps with fairly big battles i don't think they were max unit cap mega battles but they were like there was a lot of stuff going on and i was yeah i was really impressed with like i could zoom in and watch because i was playing the dwarfs like slam into these orcs it was like <laughs> there was a lot of them i'm like jesus christ and, you know i had loads of artillery and all kinds of shit on the go um but the overworld map ran at about 12 fps i was like shit that always seems to be a problem and, and well, i don't understand yeah it why. told me i didn't have enough um 
VRAM, like video memory on my card, and it said uh, it's automatically oh. reducing the graphics. I was like, uh-oh. So there must be something, well, my 780 is not fast enough, clearly, but in the battles themselves, it was totally fine. But just on the overall map, it, it was a bag of shit. But it is a dated card by today's standards. However, um, yeah, it was much more understandable to me. Even though I don't know what the dwarven units are, it's yeah. quite clear that a long beard with a fucking massive shield and a big axe is <laughs> a lad who's going in the front, right? Yeah. You know, and, and the guys with the, the, I forget what they're called, but they've got like a massive two handed hammer. Well, they're going to do some work to people if they go in. Um, and, oh, what's his name? I forgot his bloody name, the, the dwarf guy. Uh, the grudge bearer I... guy. I can't remember the name. I can't remember it. I should remember Oath. it, but I can't. Yeah, no, it's Grudge Bearer. It's not Oath Bearer. Oath. Grudge Bearer. Oath. Grudge Bearer, somebody. I'm just having a look to see if I can he's find out. He's the king. He's the high king of whatever, but he... <laughs> he's, not like, he's not like his fucking chariot thing. And he's got like the four guys underneath him carrying him around. And he's got his big grudge book of grudges. And he's like in the battle. He looks <laughs> crazy. And he's got like his axe. And he just goes like... Whoa, and he slaps him. And then he's like flicking through the pages. It's like... I don't know. It... I think I need a new GPU to play it properly, but the battles themselves worked fine and they looked pretty good. Um, especially those like little gyrocopter things. You come in and do a bombing. Yeah, they're well. mental. And, and when you can throw, if you play with the orcs, you can throw the goblin guys on the catapult and they've, they're they like in a wingsuit and you can control them. <laughs> and they go, Wah! and blow off and it's like, oh. <laughs> great. I need it might to, be Gretchen I... in it. No, I think it's goblins, right? No, it's, it's goblins, goblins. I think. Yeah, it's goblins yeah. in a uh, in uh, fantasy, but yeah, because I mean, I... you know a black orc, a load of black orcs coming towards you, that's bad news, right? You don't want, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, it, and it's like you just know it's like oh, oh, there is a horrific massive tarantula thing, uh, uh, whatever it's called. You probably don't really want to go near that, or a big dragon, <laughs> or something of that ilk, or like, it, like I knew straight away when I was fighting the orcs. They had more guys than me, right? And I just went in and killed the fucking war boss. And what happened to the orcs? They just ran off. It was like, yeah, tactical win, man. Yeah, they've, they've got, got no morale, have they? They've got no morale. Killed the fucking war boss. Well, I mean, like, I just killed him. I, I was taking massive losses, but I killed him. And they all ran away. I was like, oh. But yeah, it's I've, not, shame, I've not got really, into any I, of the, the depth of I'm, the game, like, but... I really want... When I, when I finally get around to actually playing it, I've been watching various, like, Let's Plays and stuff of it, Um, but... I've well, Lionheart said myself. he's got a load of videos on it. Yeah, um, but I, I really want to play orcs, but they're just so cowardly. <laughs> they just run away all the time. It's like, for God's sake. It's the same problem I've got with uh, Battlefleet Gothic. I mean, it, it's true to the law, yeah, but it doesn't make it any more irritating when you get your bloody battleship in there. It takes two shots and then leaves. It's like, yeah. mate, mate, are you kidding me? What the fuck? You could take on all of these by yourself. What are you running for? You have to execute the captain, all that stuff. It's just... It, the reception to it has been really good. It's sold really, really well. And it does look like, actually, this time, they've delivered a proper working product on release. It's not like a, it's not like a Rome 2 collapse. It's an actual, well, functioning game, which is... Let's, let's be honest. Creative Assembly, they do make some good stuff, but they, they have a problem with releasing games in, like, really good states. They... they they always have it's it's not like anything bad with the games themselves like design wise they're fine but they just seem to have an issue with launching them in a way that means that the games work fully when they first launch or you know they don't run at one frame a second or just start chugging at random and stuff but it looks like they've actually managed to pull it off this time and, and to be honest they needed to i think for this like they keep saying it's like the biggest total war game they've ever done it's not just that but it is also connected to one of the most sort of recognisable, iconic franchises. Even if, you know, even if you only know of Warhammer Forty Thousand, that means you know the name Warhammer. You know what Warhammer means. You know what it is. You you can't really afford to make a big deal about how big and massive your game is, and how it's like the biggest thing you've ever made, and then release it in a bad state when it's attached yeah. to something with that yeah. name. The thing, with, the thing with the yeah, the, the Rome thing, it looks massively impressive from all the demos they did. Um, the you know the developer stuff, it was like, wow, yeah. look at this. And when you got your hands on it, it was like, Pfft. this though has looked good from that standpoint, but also good at launch. I mean, let's be honest, the engine it's using is is the the Rome two one, but it's yeah. been like you know Rome got fixed, and then we had Attila came out, and then this came out, 
So they've had time and they've fixed it. And it's been their biggest selling game, hasn't it, as a result? Which yeah. ain't a shock because it's yeah. like a match made in heaven. It's like, hey, oh, look, old Warhammer Fantasy. Oh, it's line battles. Who makes a line battle game? Well, it's fucking creative <laughs> assembly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So somebody at Games Workshop for a fucking change was like, ah, oh, that would be a good idea instead of paying some shitty developer to make some horrific fucking... But, <laughs> but we'll still get rid of... Show. But we'll still just kill Warhammer Fantasy Tabletop before it's out oh, anyway. Yeah. Oh. But what we will do is we'll just completely change. So can you imagine... Like They did a thing with like, oh, buy the units from the game. And I'm like, yeah, but... Lads, Age of Sigmar is not a line battle game. It's it's like 40k fucking squad combat. It's like... <laughs> With no <laughs> rules. <laughs> no, it's stupid. It's like, oh, oh dear me. Hey, actually, I was looking at Tal the other day. you got to stop me, bloke. You sickened me. I know, I you, sickened myself. You disgust me. I've seen some battle reports with Tal on, and I like, I like, I've always liked the way Tal have operated. Yeah. But I need to... I've got like a massive... I can't be doing that. I've got like... A massive I expansion to my Space Marine army sitting in boxes waiting to be put together because I got them just before Eve was born and I, I just haven't I just haven't had time to put them together at all what you got? load of bikes load uh, of bikes I think I've got I've got they're 15, tough as five 16, ain't they bikes? yeah yeah 16 I think I've got 16 bikes and 3 attack bikes to split into squads of 5 and then I've got a, uh, a chapter master see I've never been a fan of bikes but I like the way they play Battle yeah, reports I've seen with the way bikes play is really good. Like they're really, yeah, a yeah. Lot of tactical options, and I've got a tactical squad and a Razorback as well, and a Vindicator, which I got like maybe a year ago when we first looked to get into Warhammer. <laughs> just like a K random again. Vindicator, yeah. just a random Vindicator because I needed really a strength ten, large. Yeah, blast, it's it? quality. <laughs> but AP yeah, it's, I've got the whole army planned out, including an army list. I just haven't had time to put them together because I want to play it. Like I, I really want to get into playing like a lot of Warhammer games. Um, I've, I mean, I've got a load of shit anyway, so I can put a list together. But I want to yeah. tour how to play the game properly, yeah. And, like play it at a good level, so I can just play it really quick. Because I get like stuck up on rules and shit, which I guess most people do. But just trying to find the time, <laughs> there isn't enough of yeah. it. You, no. you need like forty hour, forty eight hour days, and only require three hours sleep. That would be absolutely hey, ideal. You probably noticed this thing on my wrist, right? It tell it, it's my stupid activity tracker for my my bike and my running and whatever. But it's got a constant heart rate sensor on it, and it tells you what you've done at night when you were asleep. So I I was in deep sleep for two hours and forty something minutes last night, <laughs> and then six hours of light sleep. I'm like, okay, oh, and it God. tells you if that's good. Apparently, it is good. And also, my bit my heart rate is sixty three. My resting heart rate, which I was like, that seems a bit low, but. Apparently that's really good, but I think it's just because I go out on my bike. Like it just yeah. got lower because it said like elite athletes are like fifty five or something stupid, and I'm I'm not an elite athlete, but that's still pretty good. I was like, well, that's pretty good. Like, um, but Probably today I took my bike out. Hundred at rest for me. <laughs> well, the day I took my bike out, it was like two hundred and five. I'm like, oh. I got up a hill and I was like, fucking hell! And I looked at my wrist. I was like, Jesus Christ! I still don't know how it fucking does it, but it's got this crazy light. <laughs> Might be able to see it. Yeah, like a green light. Can you see it? Oh, is it? Is it shining the light into the uh... In, into my veins or something? Yeah, yeah. And then reading the 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 pulse through it. Yeah. I didn't know you could. I honestly, I didn't know you could do that with just having it on one side or through the wrist. I thought it had to be like it's new. Uh... It's brand new. It's brand new. This thing. Oh my, Jamie said that. No, you can do it through the wrist. What's good with this? is it's gps so you can do um speed and stuff so when i'm on my bike i've got a speedometer on my arm and it tells you where you've been like that's what's good with this one it's a, it's a fancy <laughs> garmin like one man it's good shit like it's like it's, high tech. Got, it's crazy it's got it's got emergency navigation on it if you get lost as well how what is it like a little map it's or is it like a compass it, or something no or? yeah it's like a fucking map it tells you where to go it's got um what the hell it's got GLONASS on it as well, which is the Russian GPS in case GPS isn't good enough. So you can <laughs> the connect Russian to the Russian GPS. one. GPS. Oh my yeah, God. I didn't even know that was a thing. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, but then the KGB know where you are. So. <laughs> yeah. And they'll send one of them Russian bear bomber things over to get me. <laughs> <laughs> they like to fly around Cornwall. Whoa, shit. Oh, God. Or whatever they do. They do, don't they? Flying around the North Sea or something. 
Yeah, no, they push the boundaries it's a bit. It's like some old bomber Poke from the it, fucking 50s, it a and, bit. and we send up like a super fucking Eurofighter thing. Yeah, well, yeah, they can't afford anything else, can they? <laughs> yeah, but they've got thousands that probably beat us in the war. <laughs> I refuse to believe it. I don't I think like one to... Eurofighter would beat a thousand fucking MiGs or whatever it's <laughs> You know what? I went to uh, uh, MiG the 21. Imperial, <laughs> Imperial I want to go there. Oh, shit. Uh, I was meant to go Dutchford. down to London. I was meant to go down to London a couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to go there. I mean, in fact, my hotel was near that place. The fucking because I wanted to, I even looked well, at Google. There's a couple. Like, there's one in. There's a Spitfire in the fuck yeah, hanging from the there's, roof. There's one in. There's a one tanks. in central London, and then there's one further out, uh, called, in a place called Duxford that has an air show. Um, we were there a couple of days before the air show was there. They had this. This one was in London. This, it was by Hackney. They had this amazing like. Uh, it was like this big glass exhibit that ran all the way up to a special hangar they've had built for an American aircraft section, which has got stuff like the, that A-10 uh, Warthog plane. Oh, it's the just the gun in it. It's just the mini gun, but then the, the plane's been built around it, and it like halves its speed when it fires or something, because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> and they've got, like, uh, they've got a U-2 in there, and one of those massive stealth bombers. Um, they've got loads of stuff. Americans really like their flying fortresses, it turns out. There were four varieties in that hangar, and apparently there's way more than that, but they've only got the four in there. But leading up to it, there's these glass panels all the way up the path, and it's it's like a it's like an art piece that's in memory of all the soldiers that died in World War Two, all the pilots that died in World War Two, and it was literally every American pilot that had died flying from Duxford alone in the UK to raid Germany and the surrounding areas. It was. Like it was thousands, literally thousands, and it list it showed the planes that had been lost. So like the number of planes that had gone down during the course of the war, one entire wall, which was like a good hundred meters or so, the entire thing was just bombers. And I was like, "What the hell? What? I know we lost a lot of bombers, but really, how many bombers?" And then I found out it's because when the Flying Fortress was first designed, they just sent them out in packs without any fighter escort. Yeah. It was just like, oh, well, they've got guns all over them. They'll be fine. They can cover each other. It turns out, not true. Not ab- no. Absolutely not true. Well, From what work. I understand is, the Germans, when they seen that happening, was like, this cannot be real. So all they did was, they just went above, and they came down onto them and just shot them, and just... Yeah. Well, because it was like a massive yeah. target. Hey, bloke, it's like, look they, at that massive they lost, plane. They lost loads and loads. They didn't even get a fighter escort until, I think it said it was just under two years later when they developed the Mustang. It was only yeah, when the Mustang it, yeah. was developed that it that yeah. was the only thing that had the range to keep up with the bombers. But it just meant that, like, for, for God knows how long, it was just like, sir, we lost the last pack. Well, what more. do you want me to do? About to send out more? Like, Fuck, you know. It's just like it, seeing this massive. Imagine being long the Germans, so you'd be like, you we shot f- down 300 of their bombers. There's another 300. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be a I'm bit just... demoralizing. Oh, admittedly, a stupid tactic. Like, hordes of just bombers i'm just trying to see if i can see if i can find it on uh on google images because it's like it's it's crazy i think it's fairly oh, recent no, 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 no. it just goes and it goes and it get there we go so like this is part of it in fact i'll put it on the thing so this is this is just part of it that's the that's the start of the exhibit like the yeah. uh the the thing yeah. You just you just see it just it's just constant it's just constant and constant US aircraft lost f- flying from UK bases 6,346 absolutely crazy like I, even having it like on the uh, on the memorial as you walk up it's still like you can't get your head around the number because it's for every one of those tiny little planes on the glass that was an actual plane it's just mental it- absolutely mental it was a dead good exhibit though. There's loads of just just quality stuff in there, and it was just before the uh, before they had the air show that they do uh, once a year. And as we were just about to this leave, the one people that... die at. <laughs> no, no, I think this is the safe one. <laughs> they had uh, the, what is it called? The Osprey. Do you know what that is? The the Osprey. Is that uh, the one that aircraft. lands in the sea? No, it's uh, it's it's mental. It's like half helicopter, half plane. It can land. Uh, it can land vertically because it's got like two massive propeller things. Oh yeah, yeah, it's the American thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We saw one of those coming into land. 
it makes a right noise. It's it's crazy. You you just deaf. You can't hear a damn thing when it's coming into land because it sort of comes in with the engines pointed up like that, and just just like it's like it's like you can feel the air getting beaten to death as it comes in. It's just well, that's so what it's doing, crazy. It? Battering the air. I mean, do you know what flies around by me? Um, a Chinook or Chinook, whatever you want to call it, and two Apaches. You see them all the time, like in formation. <laughs> yeah. So what, you just hear a massive noise. It's like Jesus Christ. I mean, them them fucking chinook things are they're like a double decker, aren't they? In yeah, the sky, yeah. and it's just flying past, and then there's two Apaches with it. It's like what? <laughs> I think they're Apache. I think they are. They're Apaches. They yeah, look like Apaches to me. Are. And I'm just like Jesus, Mother Christ. At least I'm safe here. I suppose if somebody <laughs> somebody could call the Apaches. <laughs> call the Apaches. Because there was there was an Apache Seven. at Duxford like practicing for the air show. Going like uh, all the way up to like vertically, and then sort of turning slightly, not going upside down as such, but kind of like turning so that it balanced, so it leveled out again. It was it was crazy watching that. It's like I, you're just watching it. And I was just thinking, it just doesn't look like a helicopter should be able to do that. No. But I mean, they operate by getting lift from the propeller. When it's like that, <laughs> and and like say the propellers are there, it's like how is it staying up? I don't understand. It's it just. It's like physics doesn't work like that, does it? But apparently it does because it never crashed. So obviously it's fine. But yeah, it was it was mental seeing that. It was just crazy. And let's be honest, walking through there, I was struck by some planes. And just like, who the fuck thought of that? Like, what is that? <laughs> there was there was one that looked like a shoebox with wings. It was it was terrible. It was like the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. And then when I found the little thing for it, it's like it was uh, it was unreliable. And it was not very aerodynamic, and it wasn't very fast, and it couldn't carry any fuel. I'm just wow. thinking, why did they build it? Why did they build it then? Why did they build it? So <laughs> what was the point? Like, Look at this. I've made this piece of shit. Oh, awesome. Mass production. Let's do it now. Why? <laughs> just don't oh, do it. Order 10,000, but <laughs> sorry, it doesn't 10, work. No. <laughs> but you do it. Oh, ridiculous. That's, anyway, that's gone off on a massive tangent. But then it's hot fix. It always goes off on a massive tangent. So we've covered, we've covered Overwatch, multiple games and news and hostile takeovers, uh, Man in the High Castle, record record play randomly, and uh, military aircraft. So you cannot say that you do not get variety and entertainment from this. You don't know what's going to be covered. It could be anything, and mental watches from the future that can tell you where you are and allow the Russians to spy. This ain't from the future. This is like. It's normal, <laughs> but it's new. But it's just because, normal. It, it's because the Garmin stuff was like stupidly expensive, and yeah. So what they've done is made them more affordable, and brought out this new range, and it's quite weird. It's just good because you can like if you can monitor your heartbeat, um, it builds up a better like um, profile, and also when you're doing like physical activity, you can work out if it's good for you based off your heart rate. Yeah. Um, but. For me, like I could have bought this crazy thing that you put on your chest, but it looks dumb as shit, and I don't want that on my chest. <laughs> like, because then you have to like hook it up to your phone, and then have to take your phone like this. You can just take this on. You don't need the phone. And the really yeah. smart thing with this is when you get in range of your phone, it connects to the phone, sends the activity information to the phone, which uploads it to the internet without you doing anything. It's quite good. I mean, it doesn't have like expandable memory in it or anything, and you can't like play music off it or whatever. But yeah, it's crazy. No. Still sounds like it's from the future. <laughs> Still sounds like it's from the it, future. It's got like a blue band on it. It's touch screen. It lasts for five days on charge as well. It's pretty good. Well, so I think so. I think Apple needs to get in touch with Buddy Garmin. Then doesn't their watch That's last the about an hour? <laughs> Apple's watch is like weird. The problem with them is that the battery life is shit because this is basic, right? It's not fucking yeah. got apps on it or whatever. Um, and they just wreck the battery life but people want all the apps don't they you want to be able to make a phone call you want to be able to do this yeah. and that and the Apple Watch <laughs> lets you do it but um, it costs a stupid amount of money and if Steve and Jobs was still alive and you can only do it, it for a couple of hours <laughs> yeah and if Jobs was still alive there's no way on earth it would um, have had so many different varieties of watch like they've got like about yeah I still don't understand how it works like as far uh, as I can tell the, just the watch itself is always the same it's just the straps that cost different but even that, I'm not even entirely sure about. And if so, what's what did the... even? Yeah, what did even? Uh, what do Apple even do these days? Uh, I don't make even care. make small rectangles. That's it. That's what they do. 
Best. Then he got like some fancy iPad bollocks. You know, my iPad broke and it never came back. The poor bastard. Oh no! I, I, I live without it now. It's fine. <laughs> Don't need. I I use mine for emails and that's about it. Because funnily enough, I've got that. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Now, yeah. Except this is quicker than the iPad. Yeah, this thing. My phone's better than my iPad. I so smashed mine in though. I was not happy about that. I've dropped mine twice and it's okay so far. Although I've got to say, I, I do like the ostentatious gold colour. <laughs> Oh, it's gold. Fucking pimp colour. Never had a gold phone. Probably never will either. Get smudgy gold as hell. <laughs> Gotta go for gold. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for Hotfix this week. There will hopefully should be another one next week. If there isn't, we'll actually let you know. Or at least I'll let you know. I'll tweet out. Uh, and if, you, if you're not following me for updates on what's happening with Hotfix and stuff like that, I yeah, don't follow know why. on Twitter. Because it quite clearly says at Kerry off down the bottom, and it has done since we've had this overlay, which was about two years ago. So for the love of God, just just follow me and I'll keep you updated. I'll let you know all the inside, what, wheelie dealings? I don't know. We're going. It's late. That's a show, isn't it, wheelie dealer? Bye. Yeah. Bye. Mike Brewer <laughs> at China. <Yeah. laughs> Why do you want to what, a, what a reference to end. <laughs>